Welcome to this Mastery Empowerment Course from New Earth One Network. This is designed exclusively for your higher self connection and embodiment. Welcome to this Mastery Empowerment Course brought to you by New Earth One Network. Today we are talking about relationships, truth, and unconditional love with sound technician and healer, Emil Johns. Hello, Emil. Welcome. Hi, Lauren. Glad to be here. As you can see, Emil is very present. And this is really what needs to happen in relationships as well. So Emil is a sound healer, but we are taking a side journey talking about relationships. And Emil, I want to ask you, why is this so important? I want to preface it by saying, at this moment right now, Mars and Venus are very close to each other near Pluto and in the collective we can see shifts in personal relationships and also this is a year of the 222 codes which is the divine feminine expression and also balancing it with the divine masculine so with that what is the meaning of this course, why were you called to offer it now at this time? I felt and feel called to offer this now because it's just what came up most clearly. I don't follow astrology very closely, but that doesn't mean it's not related, just that's not where my conscious mind comes from generally. Uh, I know that relationships are shifting very much in this world and people are questioning what is a relationship that truly honors myself and everyone involved? What is a relationship that really is guided by the divine flow of the universe where truth is the primary quality that is being held between two people individually and together and I can say more about all those things but I think that's a that's a good start so as we're talking about truth as the primary quality, can you expand a little bit more on your definition in higher consciousness of truth? Mm -hmm. You would tend to think it would be honesty, mm -hmm. but I think it's a bit deeper than that. Yeah, it's a bit deeper than that. Or you could say it's more encompassing. Honesty is definitely a part of it. Uh, you could say most primarily being honest with ourselves and truth in the sense of everyone has their divine missions on this planet, specific mission and many missions, and our relationships are meant to support that. In relationship, we are supporting someone else's mission, you could say, 
and that is also supporting what we're doing on the planet and that is the thing to be held in the highest because if it's not then it's doing the opposite <laughs> and think stories about how relationships are supposed to look or not look are the main inhibitor of truth not being the primary quality in a dynamic and that's something i really want to illustrate and uh i can keep going on that uh I would like to interject what's really coming up as I am feeling into your words. And we've actually been working on this. It's almost as the shift, it's almost as if the beliefs that we have around relationships, the stories, as you say, the shoulds, we should be this way, we should do it this way, isn't there room for doing things outside of the spectrum of that, even though it may go against norms in society? Like if your heart really feels something and it goes against the mind, the mind could say, well, you can't have that because of this. Are we getting close there? Do you feel that there's a freedom in the way that we approach our relationships, but it still comes from deep integrity, like you said, of truth for everyone involved, honoring everyone involved? Yeah, well, there is massively more freedom when we step out of the preconceived ideas of what are you could say the the types of relationships and you know there's a focus here on the idea of romantic relationship or partnership but also just relationships between people in general and as we know there are a lot of well a few let's say generalized boxes of the definition of how a relationship looks between people and when when that is stepped outside of there is huge freedom and we realize too that every relationship is different and since there's no two alike to try to really narrowly define it from ways that they've been specifically done before not to say that a relationship can't be in many ways, like the stories and ideas we have about it right now, but to know that that in no way has to limit it, and that would really be not honoring the unique dynamic between two people which are bringing something new into this world, not just in relationship, but in many ways, and there's only space for that newness and that new light, you can say, onto that planet for each of those people and in what they are doing together to happen when there is that choice to step outside of those yeah very strong ideas of how they should be all those shoulds as you said earlier it's very relevant <sighs> relationships really allow us to look internally at ourselves and they are key on our ascension process but then also in a romantic relationship there may be different qualities there can you go over some of these various qualities of these new relationships i can but also with the acknowledgement that I wouldn't want to create too much of a story about what that looks like either, aside from that it's a space where people are asking, is this for my highest good? 
the highest good of the person I'm with, the highest good of the planet, is this supporting my divine truest soul essence and that that is a primary question which is honored no matter what the answer is and i think too there's more the honoring of that question is challenging because i think it it brings up Sometimes a quick recognition of when a relationship is very not in integrity. And sometimes people fight that. They fight that a relationship is not in integrity even for... Even when it is in the best for everyone to go separate ways there's a lot of pushback and to say something like even though i feel this other person really does not want us to go our separate ways i truly know it's the best for both of us and standing in that and that takes a lot of integrity a lot of clear connection to truth and also unconditional love it's like no matter how someone responds, I'm going to love them unconditionally. And that may not come immediately, but to know that unconditional love is also freedom. What would what would be an example of something not in integrity that you can illustrate for us? You know, I've certainly had my fair share of powerful experiences in relationship dynamics, spaces where I saw myself being in truth and honoring another person's truth, and spaces where I saw me and or another person choosing very much to ignore intuition or guidance. And in the latter situation I think a lot of energy gets spent in trying to keep things together which is very the word one of the words is unnecessary uh, and it's a resistance to the guidance from both people's souls really that it's ideal to shift the dynamic and to go against that is for someone who is you know genuinely wanting to and living their life mission their life's purposes to go against that is just uh, slowing down of the unfoldment of all the light that we are and are meant to bring. So in these instances, for example, trying to keep a relationship together, when you're overriding your intuition, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or the inner guidance, mm -hmm. that's really what we're talking about. Um, how would you determine, how would one determine when something is in our divine essence? I think the primary quality of that is that it feels easy. That the, the choices happen with grace you could say. Uh, there's a smoothness versus a clunkiness that I think we all notice when we're living within our guidance. And that doesn't actually always mean the decisions are easy, but that the decisions lead to things which happen in a smooth and graceful way.
Yeah, because it is very confronting to be in dynamics which might feel like externally they look really confusing or like unclear. They can be really clear, but when they're not, and I think in this space we're all coming into on the planet, they're, they're going to not always look as maybe simple as they've looked in the past. And to really choose that is, uh, it's a pioneering way, you know, still with integrity and all of that, but it's, it's a pioneering way on this planet, which uh, people are sometimes confused by, but they also see the level to which people are being true to themselves within those things where they're sensing what's real and authentic for them as opposed to trying to fit themselves into the box or story that is already here. Yeah, the shoulds, the way it should be done. Or for example, if we're talking about romantic relationships, clinging to that relationship, many of us are programmed, there could be a program, for example, a belief system that says you have to make this marriage work, right? That That's one that's very common. Uh, it could come from parents. I know my own mother um, divorced her first husband when she wanted to divorce her second husband. Her dad came to her and said, you will make this marriage work. And so that's part of the old paradigm. And it's not so easy to extract ourselves from that but the signposts are the integrity and really the way you put it unconditional love for the benefit of others not just ourselves. so making that shift it seems very challenging for some what are some ways that people can really move through those shifts with ease and grace yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And for everyone, it is going to be different. The first thing, again, is going to be to stay connected to your intuition as much as possible and to be in spaces where it's easier to hear that guidance, whether that's being outside it could be connecting with someone who you trust very deeply where you you trust the unconditional love from them in that situation you know, sometimes people do look to others for support too much but sometimes it is aligned but anything that really quiets oneself down enough to hear what's present and what is the best way essentially to process or shift the energy which is being prompted to shift and letting things be felt you know which is the same within all of these healing practices what's present can we feel it? Can we let ourselves feel it? Can we let ourselves feel it and not judge it? And can we do that until the energy releases fully? No bypassing, no suppression, just feeling it. And that's a challenging thing for anyone because it's just coming to a space where you have to feel things that you didn't want to on a certain level, but then knowing that, feeling them, leads to greater freedom, greater connection, and your own capacity to know. Really feeling into what you don't want to feel. That is a really important key because we tend to keep on the treadmill in our relationships, again, from the shoulds that we have in those relationships. 
So we're talking about unconditional love. We're really shifting into unconditional love for every relationship. What is your con um, definition of unconditional love, even in a romantic relationship? Yeah. Unconditional love, it starts with the most primary quality of it is acceptance. That is acceptance in relationship of another person. So unconditional love is I fully accept who you are, what you are on all levels. And I'm not trying to change that. Yes, not trying to change that, the key word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And from the other side, we can very easily feel when someone is sharing love unconditionally or if they are you could say pushing for an agenda of like oh i i will love you if you would be this way and some people don't even know or haven't even yet experienced some people haven't experienced the feeling of genuine, full, accepting, unconditional love because it's so common to receive and interact with love in what seems like a conditional way. The, as long as you are doing this, I will be here with you. Again, it's back to the shoulds and the stories. As long as you are fulfilling this story about how this kind of dynamic is supposed to look, we will be. And it's interesting because while we're talking about romantic relationships, you know, that's a number one thing is we can't change anyone. I think many couples who've been together for any length of time really truly understand that you can't change one another. Acceptance is the best, but this is actually rippling out into all relationships. For example, uh, from time to time, we hear from audience members that they are having issues with their children, their grown adult children. Maybe they're estranged from their grown adult children that's bringing us back into the shoulds. Somewhere along the way in that relationship, there's a should that says, you've hurt me and now I'm retracting my love, right? Mm -hmm. What would you say to those who are, for example, estranged from any family member or having an issue with loving family members? You know, the greatest spiritual teachers have said, if you really want to work on your spirituality, go love your family. I would say the primary thing to do is to feel what that's bringing up in one's own system. You know, it's, and uh, I know there's two perspectives here that I see internally. I'm kind of perspective as in like the the child or the parent, uh, you know, it can be either way. I would say, I think we're a little more sensing into the parent side of not feeling they can really accept or unconditionally love what their offspring is doing. And One thing to say, which is slightly agenda-based, but it's true, is that 
the best way for someone to actually shift into a space which maybe you see as better for them is to accept them exactly as they are. And when someone feels completely accepted, then they also, they don't feel that resistance to who they are or how they are right now. And if there is a more beneficial thing for them to be doing for themselves or in general, then they are most likely by far to shift into that way naturally and in an aligned way by feeling just the acceptance with how they are right now. So ideally we're not still trying to make people shift, but know too that if you do want someone to shift and think that it really is in their highest benefit to do so, then to accept them exactly as they are in this moment will most easily open that path or have that path be more open for them. Yes, I'm, I'm playing the role of a parent here and I'm looking at being a parent, for example, and really caring about the future of your child. And sometimes that could come across as what's called passive aggression where we can say, okay, so maybe next time you'll learn not to sleep in so late. Or for example, maybe you won't stay up all night if you have to take an airline flight the next day, all right? That could be seen as passive aggressive. So at what point, how do we act? What you're saying is instead of making a comment you shouldn't have stayed up so late if you have to go on a big air travel flight. Another way to phrase that would be what? How would you phrase that? Well, in a lot of situations, it's often best to just not engage regardless. But if there was to be any, it would be something that really emphasizes that you know it's it's their choice regardless and it's more in the the energy of it than the tonality i mean th than the words themselves and uh, actually uh, when i say tonality that's a little bit then related to the the sound work that i do and how tonality of voice carries more information than the words themselves and it's much more challenging to you know quote like control our tonality because it comes from a, a deeper place within us and it's registered the truth of our tonality is registered by another person in a very intuitive way so yeah, again, very often we're going to find these situations where we so strongly want to say something, but there's almost no way that we could communicate that would actually benefit the situation. And then to have the, the internal clarity be like, wow, like I so badly want to say something and really it's best for everyone that I don't in this moment. Not that that's always going to be the case, but probably in, in more situations than people realize it is. Yes, and that really takes us into creating healthy boundaries. Healthy boundaries. Your definition of a healthy boundary is what? A healthy boundary, again, it's going to depend on the dynamics. So it's going to be the healthy boundary is going to be unique for every situation, but it's a uh, it's saying if you cross this line, then you're impeding on my freedom to make my own decisions and freedom to see clearly what's for my highest. It's, it's the level to which you will allow people to kind of hearing like in influence your decisions or influence your energetic field 
and we feel safer letting down our boundaries the more we know that someone's connection is coming from an unconditional place, a space of unconditional love and acceptance. So the healthy boundary, I guess you could say then, is I'm only letting in someone's connection insofar as it is unconditionally regarding. I love that. You have a course coming up. You're going to be working with people in a group session and also individual sessions so that we can go deep into this on all aspects. There's no boundaries of where this goes or what types of relationships this is all about. Share with us what's going to occur in these sessions and how they will benefit the participant. Mm -hmm. so the the series the four group sessions that are 90 minutes and one private 60 minute session with me they're very conversation based very what's present and the context of how people see relationships or what beneficial relationships are or aren't really gets to be highlighted very clearly and again because there will be a unique relationship that shows up in the relationship of the group to each other and and with me it's going to be dependent on that but perfectly guided to by that of course such that yeah, you can really feel, you do really feel seen and heard. And in that way, the space is one that's very unconditional, like totally accepting of how someone's showing up and not that we're trying to you know, have people go into intense spaces of Yeah, of, uh, let's say, vulnerability. Like, there's all the space to be as vulnerable as you want about whatever you want to share, but no expectation to. And just the knowing of coming into a space more in all our relationships that is based on truth and unconditional love, honoring what's present with ourselves, honoring what's present with another and the, the insight just flows through that to everyone. Mm -hmm. And the grounding of those ideas, I want to say, of those senses of the, the benefit. Yes. Who is this course for? What type of person is this perfect for and very beneficial for? That's a good question, I would say. This is perfect for anyone feels anyone that feels like it's going to be perfect. That is, if you feel that intuitively this is a place where you will get a lot of benefit, then it is for you, and that would be the only deciding factor. Yes, they'll know in their heart, based on their current situation, in their lives and if this resonates. It really is a surrendering to love. It's a surrender to self-love so that we could love ourselves so deeply that we let that be expressed in the relationship. Yeah. Even whether that means letting someone go or cultivating just unconditional love and acceptance in the relationship. You know, one of the big most popular questions we get is regarding twin flames or soulmates. What would you have to say about this concept? Because that really, in a way, it feels like it takes a little bit of our own power away. What are your thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that 
the idea of twin flames or soul mites, soul soul mites, <laughs> soul mates, <laughs> is a powerful and beautiful one. Uh, I have no clear idea on the truth or untruth of it. I've read some you know powerful accounts which you know resonated deeply with me about the definitions of what those things are and i feel that the the ideas can sometimes lead to attachment or connection with people that are past what is beneficial for our soul purpose. So in a way it has often become another one of those stories that people are trying to live into, which you know, which comes then from the from our uh, our spiritual practice. But wherever it comes from, a story is still a story. That's not to say that, again, some stories don't have truth to them and truth that is part of our personal truth or truth in connection with another. So again, specifically with Twin Flame and Soulmate to really see if that's uh, an idea that's being held to beyond what feels natural within one's guidance. Beautiful. Well, we are excited for this course. Is there anything else you'd like to add about what people can expect from this or what they can learn as well. I uh, just feel to emphasize, you know, the kind of acceptance that I think will be felt within this, the, the very big space to share freely about what they believe relationship to be and really see blind spots essentially of where they're trying to, where we may be trying to fit relationships or dynamics into a specific box when really the truth of it is something else <laughs> and whatever that else is is actually a very very beautiful and exciting thing because it's one way of putting it is that it's it's innovation on the planet it's energies which are for the benefit of all which if we tune in to what that is it's it's really it's really unbelievably profound and it's very close to being contacted just by saying, okay, I'm not going to totally devote all of my beliefs around this subject to what's already been done or what's already here. And just that permission to let go of those stories to whatever degree we're ready to is extremely liberating and, and brings through a lot of genuine selfhood connection because when people are really coming from that place with each other, like there is a there is an expansion that is is really really incredible. Yeah, really creativity and new things from that allowance. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, thank you for this interview, Loren. Really appreciate it. And I look forward to the course and whoever feels called into this space. 
It is a beautiful space. It is a space to dive deep into your relationships, your uh, uh, beholdment of unconditional love, what that is, acceptance of others, so that we can truly bring new earth from a higher level of consciousness through our relationships changing relationships on the planet as our planet ascends we are all ascending with her and we are doing it through relationships thank you emil we're really excited for your course and the wisdom that you bring through and the dynamic help and assistance that you offer those who attend thank you Thank you.